Welcome, future CFA charter holders. Get ready for another exciting dive into the world of derivatives, brought to you by FinQuiz, your trusted partner on this CFA journey. Let's unpack the tools and strategies that will not only help you ace the exam, but also sharpen your edge as a finance professional. Let's jump in. All right, let's talk about derivatives, the good, the bad, and how issuers and investors actually use these financial tools in the real world. First up, the benefits of derivatives. Derivatives can be a powerful tool for risk management or transfer. They allow you to adjust your risk exposure without actually trading the underlying asset. Whether you want to increase, decrease, eliminate, or transfer risk, derivatives can get the job done. Another major perk, price discovery. Derivative markets provide a window into the expectations of the underlying asset's price. Take futures contracts. They often signal where the cash market might be headed. For instance, equity index futures give traders a sense of the market's opening prices before trading begins. Interest rate futures? They offer a clue on investor expectations around future interest rate movements. With commodity futures, the prices reflect supply-demand balances among producers, consumers, and investors. And options? They're all about implied volatility, helping gauge the anticipated price swings of an asset. Then we have operational advantages. Derivatives come with lower transaction costs compared to cash markets, making them attractive for active traders. Plus, you don't need a massive capital outlay to get started as margin requirements are generally lower than what you'd need in the spot market. For instance, going short in derivatives is often easier than in traditional markets. So thanks to these benefits, derivatives add to market efficiency by making it easier and cheaper to trade assets, which ultimately helps financial markets run smoother. Before we move forward, guys, let me take a moment to talk about these PDFs by FinQuiz you're seeing on the screen. These aren't just any study materials. They're designed specifically to save you time and help you focus on what matters most for the CFA exam. If you haven't grabbed them yet, do yourself a favor. Just hit the link below, make the purchase, and boom! You'll have a concise, high-impact study tool that's already a hit with so many CFA candidates. They condense the material into clear, concise formats that are easy to review and retain. They've saved countless hours and headaches for folks prepping for the exam so they might just do the trick for you too. Now, let's move forward. So, um, by lowering transaction costs, cutting down the capital required to open positions, and making short selling a cinch, derivatives invite more players onto the field. That influx of participants, it typically means tighter spreads, better price discovery, and a whole lot more efficiency. In other words, when derivative markets thrive, the broader market gets a boost. It's like adding premium fuel to your economic engine. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Derivatives come with their fair share of risks. The biggest, leverage. Derivatives allow investors to control large positions with relatively little capital, but this leverage cuts both ways. A small market movement in the wrong direction can mean big losses. This is why some derivative strategies, especially leveraged ones, can lead to financial distress if things go south. Another risk is lack of transparency. Derivatives can be complex, and unless you fully understand how they're priced and what drives their value, you might be taking on risks you're not even aware of. That's why they're sometimes seen as a black box, especially by those unfamiliar with the market. Basis risk is another tricky one. This arises when the derivative doesn't perfectly match the asset it's meant to hedge. 
For example, if you're hedging wheat but using a futures contract tied to a different grade or type of wheat, the hedge might not work as intended. And then there's liquidity risk. If you can't meet a margin call, your position might get closed out at a loss. Counterparty credit risk also comes into play, particularly with over-the-counter OTC contracts where there's no clearinghouse to step in if the other party defaults. Finally, derivatives can increase systematic risk in the market. The high leverage and speculative activity can sometimes amplify volatility, leading to broader market instability. So why do issuers, like companies, use derivatives? Primarily to hedge risks tied to their operations. Imagine a multinational company facing currency exposure on foreign sales or an oil company vulnerable to crude price swings. Issuers can use derivatives to manage these risks. They might hedge interest rate risk with interest rate swaps, manage foreign exchange risk with currency forwards, or control raw material price risk with commodity futures. This use of derivatives to hedge lets companies focus on their core business without being as exposed to unpredictable market swings. For issuers, hedge accounting has made using derivatives more transparent. With this approach, the fair value of derivatives is reported on the balance sheet, aligning with the risk management goals and reducing the volatility in financial statements. There are three main types of hedges. Cash flow hedge is used to guard against fluctuating future cash flows. Fair value hedge protects against changes in the value of assets or liabilities. And the net investment hedge shields against currency risk in foreign investments like using a currency swap to stabilize returns from a subsidiary in another country. All right, now let's get into the details of these three big types of hedges you'll need to know for the CFA Level 1 exam. Think of these as the toolkit of risk management. Each one does something a little different, but they all help companies stay ahead of potential financial hits. Cash flow hedge. Um, this one's all about stabilizing cash flows tied to future transactions. Say a company is worried about rising raw material costs or fluctuating interest rates on a loan. They'll use something like an interest rate swap to turn a floating rate loan into a fixed rate one or a forward contract to lock in future FX rates. It's perfect for managing variability in future payments. Fair value hedge. Now this is your go-to when you want to protect the value of an asset or liability on your books. Picture a company that owns a big chunk of stock and fears a price drop. They might use a put option to hedge that equity investment. Or if they've got fixed rate debt, they could swap it to floating to better align with market conditions. This hedge locks in stability for what you already own. Now, the net investment hedge. This one's for multinational players. If you've got a subsidiary in another country, you're exposed to currency fluctuations affecting that investment's value. A currency forward or swap steps in to smooth out those FX risks. It's like putting a safety net under your global operations to keep the numbers steady. Each of these hedges serves a unique purpose, but the goal is always the same. Manage risk, stay predictable, and avoid nasty surprises in your financials. All right, let's talk about why companies love derivatives. Imagine you're running a business and you're constantly dealing with unpredictable stuff like interest rates, foreign exchange swings, or even skyrocketing raw material prices. That's where derivatives come in. They're like your financial seatbelt, helping you hedge against risks and keep your cash flows steady. Now, thanks to hedge accounting, those gains and losses actually show up on the balance sheet so it's all about transparency. And remember, you'll see different types of hedges. Cash flow hedges for stabilizing future payments, 
fair value hedges for locking in asset values, and net investment hedges for protecting foreign subsidiaries from currency chaos. You might get a question like this. A company wants to protect its raw material costs for the next year. Which type of hedge is it likely using? Answer, cash flow hedge. Easy, right? Let's keep going. Finally, let's talk about investors and how they use derivatives. For investors, derivatives are like Swiss Army knives. They can do a bit of everything. Some investors use derivatives to replicate a cash market strategy without actually holding the asset, which can be cheaper and more flexible. Others use them to hedge their portfolios against adverse price movements. Let's say you're holding a bunch of stocks and you're worried about a downturn. You might use options or futures to reduce the potential downside. Derivatives also allow investors to tweak their exposure by either increasing or decreasing their stake in an asset without fully buying or selling it. For instance, futures contracts can give them exposure to an index without needing to buy all the underlying stocks. Plus, derivatives are great for improving liquidity and reducing capital needs. Options and futures require less cash up front, so investors can stay nimble. With derivatives, you get a powerful mix of benefits and risks. For both issuers and investors, derivatives offer tools to manage risk, enhance market access, and drive efficiencies. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. These tools are only as effective as the strategy and knowledge behind them. All right, candidates, that wraps up our deep dive into derivatives. We've covered everything from the benefits and risks to how both issuers and investors use these powerful tools. Remember, derivatives are all about balance, managing risk and seizing opportunity, but always with an eye on the potential pitfalls. Now, the best way to solidify what you've learned is to practice, 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 Make sure you're working through plenty of problems and scenarios to understand how these concepts play out in different situations. I highly recommend diving into FinQuiz's practice materials as they're designed to reinforce these topics in a way that mimics the actual CFA exam style. And of course, don't forget the CFA Institute's practice exams. These will give you a real taste of what to expect on test day. So keep up the hard work, stay consistent with your practice, and remember, you're building a strong foundation for success. Good luck, and let's ace this CFA journey.